Hey teams, you're watching the student captain of Two Branch, Emma Kirschbaum, and in this episode, we're going to focus on a universal aspect of any cohesive group of people, team building. Before we begin, be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss another episode, and then leave a comment below with your team name and number so we know who is tuning in. Whether in the build season or the competitions, our squad operates in sub-teams, which need to work together to make the best job up, as well as the best overall experience for the team. This means team building is crucial for a co cohesive and productive program. So in this video, we will talk about, about why team building is important and what it looks like. In the spirit of team building, how about you say it with me this time? It's time for This Is How We Robot. When you have a cohesive team, it's a better team, which leads to better robots and more community impact. There are three main values that contribute to this. Respect for each other, building camaraderie with the teammates leads to more comfortable with your teammates, understanding that people communicate differently and accounting for it in your communication with others. Now, we cut to our special guest alumni, Dominic Kirschbaum, where he will talk about how these values can help build a team to be successful. Hi, I'm Dominic Kirschbaum, and I was the 2019 and 2020 team captain. In the 2017 season, our team won its first event in five years and was the captain of the winning alliance. This would not have been possible if the team did not set up good communication between each other before and during events. Our scouting and strategy team, pit crew, and drive team were all on the same page about who we were facing, what our alliance needed to do to win the match, what robot fixes needed to be made, and what our drive team needed to practice. All of this allowed us to run like a well-oiled hex bearing through qualification matches, selecting the best available alliance partners, and working with them to successfully work our way through the playoff bracket and end up winning the event. Building a good foundation will not only help you in the competition season, but will also allow you to build a great robot in the build season. This was the case in the 2020 season. While the team's robot never saw the field due to the COVID-19 pandemic, I feel that the robot was one of the best robots that the team had ever made and the chairman's team was the most successful in team history. Part of the reason for this was the clear communication and respect between members of the team. Because of this, designs could be effectively conveyed and analyzed, leading to a good base for prototyping and design work. Additionally, the design build test cycle was significantly more streamlined than years past due to quicker pivots in the prototyping stage and a reduction in manufacturing time due to clear understanding of manufacturing needs and a rapid development on the program front due to more con concrete design earlier in the cycle. Respect, camaraderie, and communication will not only help on the engineering front, but it allowed our 2020 chairman's team to utilize many of the same techniques to be the most successful in team history. Quick pivots like those seen in the design process allowed for the team to overcome hurdles in documentation and quickly adapt to an online presentation format, leading to a better presentation and submission overall. However, this was not the main reason that our chairman's team did well. Chairman's is built around the outreach and culture that your team promotes, and the foundation that we built around the three core values allowed for us to do vaster and more meaningful outreach, which both furthered team cohesion and allowed for us to win our both a district and district championship chairman's award in the 2020 season. The core values described previously will not only allow your team to function better, but it will build better interpersonal skills within the students on the team which is an invaluable skill set that they will take with them once their time on the team is over. Respect, camaraderie, and communication get more important the larger the organization you are working in gets. On the University of Michigan Solar Car team, there are many more moving parts than a first team, so being able to clearly communicate with people on other parts of the team while maintaining respect and camaraderie is a valuable skill set to have. It also allows us to go from a set of regulations to a road legal car powered only by the sun in a little under a year and a half with the goal of having the best design and manufacturing at the forefront of our minds when doing this. Those same traits that allowed QBranch to accelerate our design build test cycle in the 2020 season are apparent in the actions of the solar car team. Once you get to a company, these skills become even more important as time and money become a large constraint and the customer asks become higher end. In this setting, knowing how to communicate across more organizational hierarchy levels becomes a necessity and building respect and camaraderie with your coworkers allows you to tackle problems together and in a way that makes most sense with the constraints you are faced with. Now I'm going to toss it back to Emma, who is going to talk about what team building looks like. Thanks, Dom. So as Dom said, I'm going to go over some 
team building games and activities. A common thread is breaking the ice between team members and cooperative and competitive and learning things about others. Name games are the perfect way to start because knowing names is more personal than just saying, hey, some common games are going in a circle saying your name and a fun fact, or playing group juggle, which is where you circle up and toss a ball to a person by saying their name without the ball dropping. To make it more challenging, keep adding more balls in until it gets ridiculous. Another game is bingo or human scavenger hunt, where a team member makes a list or bingo board where each person has to find another person that meets the criteria, like finding another person who has a name in their name. The next step after name games are communication and strategy games. This is a great next step of after learning about each other's name because it is now learning about how to work with each other. Some common games are, number one, elixir of life. One person stands next to a water bottle or something similar. If that person sees someone in the group moving, that someone then goes back to the start. The goal, of the, the goal of the group is to steal the water bottle and bring it back to the start line. Once the water bottle has been moved from the original starting place, the person in the middle gets two guesses per time they turn around on who has the water bottle. If the person with the water bottle is caught, the whole group starts over again. Number two, maze game. Set up a five by five grid of dots, paper sheets or whatever, and have the group start on one side. The group takes turns through the line trying to work their way through a maze that is only marked on the facilitator's paper. Each time a group member takes a step, the facilitator tells them if the step is good or not. Once the group has found their way through, everyone in the group goes all the way through one at a time. The group wins when everyone has made it through once. The last step for main team building is cooperative and competitive games. These games are good for letting the team have fun once they are more together as a team. It builds camaraderie and has more freeform approach to solving problems. Uh, some common games are towel volleyball. Split the group into two teams and pair them up. Give each pair a towel and arrange them into a formation that has each pair covering a roughly equal share of their half of the court. Then play volleyball. Each team is allowed three touches max once the ball crosses the net, the ball can't touch the ground, and points are awarded only when a team wins a point that they served on. Play to a score or until you run out of time. Number two, goose chase. An app-based game where you can split people up into teams and they compete to earn the most points through challenges, that are posted by the game master. These games can span a night, a weekend, several weeks, or the whole season, and include challenges that are robot related, event related, or just doing things out in the community. They have to take a picture of every challenge they complete for it to count as a submission. So it's a great way to get pictures of the team doing fun things or even outreach. If you set up some challenges along those lines, some examples of team-themed challenges from us were finding a produce item with the PLU code 4327, going to house number 4327 and taking a picture with the mailbox, finding certain things in the pits at an event like a specific team member or notable volunteer, or etc. Three, Nerf War. Teams are chosen. Each person has a Nerf gun, a strategy, and boundaries to run and hide around. As you can see, there are plenty of ways to do team building. In conclusion, knowing what you want to accomplish with your team building is just as important as what you want to do in team building. There are plenty of options in list for team building games that you can adapt to your group size. Thanks for watching and being with, the, being with us here today. Remember to leave a comment with your team name and number so we know what robots to cheer for this season. And as always, subscribe to this channel to keep finding out more on This Is How We Robot.